Hi folks, this is Lee Murphy, the artist behind Art by Lee Murphy and the creator of all the artwork and neat thingies you find on this channel. And in this video I wanted to share with everybody uh, my solution for uh, pochade, pochade box, what, it's just a fancy word for the box you bring with you when you want to paint and draw on location uh, as an artist or even just a little traveling writing box. You know, people don't really use as many, use briefcases so much anymore in the age of the laptop computer and such, but uh, I was inspired by this from one I had seen online, but it was beautiful and it had a lot of neat features to it, but, excuse me, bug, go wear somewhere else. It didn't quite have everything I wanted for the price it was going to cost, but considering the work that goes into these things, it's a fair price, so... Uh, I ended up doing my homework and deciding what it is I do, really did want, and the well, bug's just going to stay there, I guess, uh, what I did and did not want if I was going to put the effort in something like this. So this is what I came up with. Uh, I'm also working on another one made out of birds. This is walnut. But I'm working on another one made out of bird's eye maple, and I found pieces of wood like this online, and I researched to find what would work the best with a minimal amount of work so these are actually two pieces of walnut on the top two on the bottom and then standard quarter inch thick walnut pieces that i didn't have to cut down or anything like they just seemed to work and then of course i sounded the edges off then i found fittings like these at the box store and the next one i do is probably going to have a smaller piano style hinge because you know, I like to work on these things and, and work with them, and I don't want them to be particularly fragile. I mean, I put a lot of effort in it, and I don't want it to be destroyed. So, then I took some scraps of leather, and a little trick I learned, because this stuff can be expensive, is going to any old thrift shop, and you go to the section with the uh, leather belts and purses and stuff, and you can find all this stuff for, I think I paid a dollar for, I don't think I pay more than a dollar for an old purse, and then take off all these fittings and use them, cut them down, use the leather, it's usually pretty good quality, um, and turn it into something I really wanted. So, to open it up, here is what inspired me uh, from, I won't name the name, but it's a lot of work that still goes into it, but it's exactly the size and features that I wanted. So there's another scrap of leather that I used smaller wood screws with brass washers so they don't poke through this rather thin wood. I mean, walnut's pretty hard wood, so it's pretty sturdy. And then I sewed in typical one inch um, elastic to hold exactly the pieces that I wanted. Then I super glued a magnet in there to hold the clips. And then of course I bolted on these uh, little alligator clips, or whatever you wanna call those things, for reference photos or things that I might want to have with me to draw if there's nothing I want to draw on location. And then I used a uh, wide weave tool ribbon to sew this particular pocket. And then I used more of the elastic to hold it in there to hold on my little fun stuff in there with like extra ink. And I have a stamp in there, um, something to mark pages with and extra there's a stamper right there, extra paint brushes and anything else that might seem to work for whatever it is I want to do with the project. All right, Bug, you need to get out of there. So, as you can see, when I back off here, it's just the perfect size for what I wanted. Um, this is a size of book. Well, here's two. here are two uh, Moleskine um, books that I covered up with neat paper. Um, and they just seem to fit in here pretty well for the, you know, for the reasons why I just said. And then here is a journal that is my favorite size. And it's just enough to get in and out of here without shuffling around inside, getting all beat up. And there's the subject material for it. And a nice little jar. I usually use whatever bottle I'm drinking out of at the time, water bottle, so I don't have to worry about it spilling in here. And here is just a simple... Uh, traveling watercolor kit. Everything I need and nothing I don't. Try to keep it to the barest minimum of things. So, anyhow, hopefully that helped inspire you to make your own DIY traveling painting kit because, once again, with a little thought and a little effort, 
and a little learning, you can come up with your own thing that suits you the best and not have to settle for an off-the-shelf option. So hopefully this helped, and thank you for watching.